How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity and to gather around the Lord's table in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I, with desire, have I desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, suffer. And as we gather, we do this in remembrance of him as an indication that we know what he has accomplished, what has been accomplished. It's an effect upon us of the new covenant as it is accomplished in Christ Jesus. I have a main text from uh, Psalm 126, particularly the last verse. You'll remember Brother Al speaking earlier today, speaking from Psalm 110, he spoke of how Christ himself was the one that plumbed the depths of sorrow, but this was on the road to ascending to the heights of joy. And as we gather around the table, there, there is sorrow associated with it, but yet it's also associated with great joy, great joy. And so this psalm demonstrates that, particularly in the last verse. I'll go ahead and read the psalm, and then I have uh, several other texts that I'd like to bring to our memory this evening to help us as we give thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 126, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongues with singing. Then said they among the nations, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And then notice the change. It's been talking, they us, our, and then it changes to singular here in verse 6, indicating the Lord Jesus Christ. As we see another prophecy, it says, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. He that goeth forth. When the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, it was as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoicing as a strong man to run a race. When he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering not desire. You wouldest not, but a body you have prepared me. He said, Lo, I come to do your will, O God. He made himself of no reputation. Rather, he took upon himself the form of a servant. He was made in the likeness of men, and as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to death even the death of the cross. He went forth. He went forth and wept. He that goeth forth and weepeth. This one, Jesus, was despised and rejected of men. He's known as a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. He was despised. We esteemed him not. Yet surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him smitten of God, stricken, afflicted, Speaking of him, the psalmist said, My tears have been my meat day and night. Jesus said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you together. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. For thy sake I have, been, I have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. I am even become as a stranger unto my brethren, an alien unto my mother's children. The reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. Speaking of Jesus, when I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. And yet, as for me, my prayer is unto you, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O God. In the multitude of your mercy, you will hear me in the truth of your salvation. Jesus then came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. He that goeth forth and weepeth. Then he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. 
In the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and is heard in that he feared. And though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed. Remember, it says that he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap eternal life. We know that Jesus never sowed to his flesh. Therefore he saw no corruption. He was raised in power. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And he bore a precious seed, except a corn of wheat, fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. My meat, Jesus said, is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. He's bearing very precious seed. He is the precious seed. My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. The works with the Father hath, which, which the Father hath given me to finish, these same works I do. Bear witness of me, then, that the Father hath sent me. He came bearing precious seed as he spoke the words of life. He was the Word made flesh. And yet, at the same time, he was the seed of promise, by whom all increase, all fruit would flourish. Doubtless come again. Doubtless come again. Rejoicing, with rejoicing. Hear, therefore, the parable of the sower. The sower, picturing even God as the sower, the seed, if you will, as Christ. What kind of a ground will it be sown into? Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Christ is now risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Of his own will he begat us with the word of truth, so that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Doubtless he will come again with rejoicing. We shall look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, because for the, joy, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. And now he is set down at the right hand of the Father. We see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. See, this is the going forth and weepeth, and yet the other aspect. But now crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. It became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, that he should bring many sons unto glory, and he should make the captain of their salvation perfect or complete through sufferings. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. This is Jesus declaring the name of God to us. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. I will put my trust in him, Behold, I and the children which God hath given to me. Jesus said, And now I come to thee. These I speak in the world, so that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. As we gather around the tables, we are able to partake of this reaping, if you will, this bringing his sheaves. We are the sheaves, and we are also partaking of the joy as the sheaves are brought in. The harvest is truly great, the laborers few. Pray, therefore, ask, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he may send forth laborers into his harvest. So the purpose of the sower now, we see that all should come in the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, and to a complete, a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of Christ's fullness. Lift up your eyes, look on the fields. They are white already to harvest. We are co-workers and co-laborers together with God. We enter into this joy. He that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, so that both he that soweth and they that reap may rejoice together. That's why we're gathering around the table, to rejoice together with our Savior. 
One soweth and another reapeth. Other men labor, and yet you are entered in to their labors. All things are for your sakes. This harvest that's being reaped is abundant. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. The cup of blessing now which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ and the bread which we break? Is this not the communion of the body of Christ? We being many then are one bread, one body. We are all partakers of that one bread. This is the bread which came down from heaven as the one that came down weeping, bearing precious seed, and now reaping in joy. Brother Sean. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for all that you have done for us. Lord, as we prepare our hearts to take this communion, Father, I thank you for blessing it. Lord, I thank you for coming, for humbling yourself, for dying. Father, for loving us before we loved you. Father, as we prepare to take this cup and this bread, Lord, be in our hearts. Be here with us. Lord, I thank you for the spirit that you've blessed us with. Thank you for these brethren. And Lord, that we can commune together in remembrance, Father, of what you've done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.